All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Tuesday, May 21st Transportation and Parking Commission meeting. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works and the Chair of the Commission. Welcome to everyone. Uh, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Uh, and Beth, if you are ready, please call the roll for us. Donna Lascalia, Director of the DPW. Here. John Cartledge, Chief of Police. Here. Carolyn Mish, Director of Planning and Sustainability. Here. Are you Nancy, Nancy Forrestal, uh, Parking Enforcement Administrator. Here. Alex uh -huh. Jarrett, Counselor. Here. Uh, Deborah. Here. It's just Sorry. Yeah. Pastor Clemmer. Yeah, it's just Clemmer now, no pastor. So it's a lot oh. easier. Okay, I'll change that. Thank you. Um, Adam Novit. Devin Bruce. Diana Day Foskett. Jamie Albro Fisher. Here. Beth, I do see Devin here. Um... I'm not sure why she's not responding, but she is in the participant list, but um, right she's right. not responding. There she is. Yeah. Okay, either way we have a quorum. She's having mic issues. Oh, okay, good enough. All right, well, I believe we have a quorum, so we can proceed. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, I see there are some folks here from the public. Um, so first up is public comment. Um, this is your opportunity to address the commission on any topic. Um, I do ask if you are here for an agenda item, if you could just hold your comments until we get to that place in the agenda, it makes for a more orderly meeting. But if you are here to speak about something that is not on the agenda, um, you're welcome to, uh, speak to us now. I just ask that you limit your comments to three minutes and we do need your uh, name and city uh, or town of residence. Um, so is there anyone here who wishes to speak to us about a non-agenda item? Welcome to raise your virtual hand. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to approval of minutes from the previous meeting, which was March 19th, 2024. Can I have a motion uh, for a positive recommendation, please? I'll move to approve. And I'll second it. Okay, is there any discussion on the minutes? Okay, hearing none, Beth, please call the roll. Uh, was that Carolyn who seconded? A Debbie. Oh, sorry. Okay. Donna? Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Alex? Yes. Deborah Clemmer? Yes. Devin Bruce? I'm assuming you're still here, but you're not able to vote. Um, <clears throat> Jamie? Uh, yes. And I'm assuming Diana has not joined us and Devin is quiet and Adam has not joined us. Is that correct? That it's is like all six, accurate. Yeah. Six, seven. So that's seven yeses. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next up is reports from departments and subcommittees. Uh, I'll start with the DPW, um, and I apologize in advance. We're having a very bad thunderstorm here, um, so hopefully my Wi-Fi holds in the middle of this severe weather. Um, so I'll start with updates from Public Works. So our mill and overlay paving project is expected to begin next month. Areas to be repaved are the roundabout by Wood Park, Spring Street, Loudville Road, North Elm Street, North Maple Street, Chestnut Street, Burt's Pit Road, and Dana Street. 
Uh, the resurfacing project also includes some uh, sidewalk reconstruction along several of the streets to be repaved, upgrades to curb ramps, new pavement markings, speed hump and speed table installation, and sign installation. We're also redoing the sidewalk from the Look Park roundabout all the way down into Florence Center. Um, we do have a sewer lining project that is ongoing right now uh, in Ward 3, Williams Street, uh, and the Market Street neighborhoods, we have a variety of parking restrictions and traffic restrictions in the area, and there is information posted on our website. We will be starting the Adair Place outfall restoration. So that's a storm water project uh, on the bike path at the end of Adair Place. We have to do that uh, before we repave the bike path. Um, so that project is going to be geared up uh, to get going uh, next month. And again, updates posted on our website. Um, Mass Central Rail Trail. Um, so we've talked about repaving uh, the rail trail from Stop and Shop up to Look Park Roundabout. We're finalizing plans with our consultant, Ty and Bond, and we are awaiting word on a half million dollar Mass Trails grant to offset a portion of the cost of that project. Um, the project estimate on that is uh, well over a million dollars. So uh, if we do receive the grant, that will be very helpful to us in defraying some of the costs. Uh, Smith College pedestrian improvements. Uh, this work includes the installation of rectangular rapid flashing beacons, signs, and pavement markings at several intersections along Elm Street and West Street. This project was going to bid in early June. Um, we hope to have the work complete by fall. Um, and then just a couple of notes. Uh, Federal Street is reduced to one lane at the culvert crossing between Milton Street and Vernon Street until further notice. Uh, we are working through um, trying to determine how to best handle that culvert. It is failing. And Love Failed Street, that culvert actually has failed, and that is closed until further notice. Um, Mass DOT projects are ongoing. Damon Road reconstruction, if anyone's been down there lately, um, the road is completely stripped, um, and their efforts are ongoing, um, as well as the I-91 bridges. Um, and there are main restrictions. Um, and quite a bit of uh, traffic in the area. So uh, questions on those projects should be directed to Mass DOT District 2. Uh, so those are DPW updates. Uh, anyone else have any updates for us, Carolyn? Um, just one, I mean, we're still awaiting the release of the 75% design plans for a picture Main Street project, but we've been through the comment review period with MassDOT. Um, and so we anticipate that will be shortly available for review. Um, this period then we'll, we'll start embarking on a pretty fast pace to get to um, the 100% plan level through um, the summer and um, still on track for um, advertising um, next year. So all I have. Okay. Thanks, Carolyn. Uh, anyone else have any updates for us? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to matters before the commission. Uh, so we have a discussion of several traffic coming requests and two parking requests that so we will take them in the order they appear on the agenda. Um, and again, for members of the public who are here, uh, we'll have an opportunity to hear your thoughts as we move through the agenda. So first up is a discussion of a traffic calming request for Woodmont Road. Um, so this request came to us in January of 2023. The resident concern is traffic exceeding the speed limit, uh, and there is a request for speed humps. Um, so just a couple of comments on Woodmont Road uh, provides one lane of travel in north and south directions between North Street and Bradford Street. It's approximately 900 feet long and about 20 feet wide. There are no sidewalks on the street. There's a crosswalk at the intersection with North Street. And there's also a crosswalk at the rail tail crossing. Parking is allowed on both sides of the street and there is no existing speed regulation. Pavement is in excellent condition. Um, Chief, if you wouldn't mind letting us know what you collected for speed and uh, accident data. Sure. Um, the covert speed data collection device was placed in front of 25 Woodmont uh, from August 14th through August 20th, 2023. During the data collection period, the speed of 1,663 cars were analyzed. The average speed was 16 miles per hour. 
and the 85th percentile speed was 22.3 miles per hour. Okay, thank you, Chief. Um, and now I'll ask, is there anyone here from the public who wishes to speak to us about uh, Woodmont? Welcome to raise your hand and we'll recognize you. Okay, Jesse. Um, I'm gonna unmute you. Okay. Apologize for the applause. I was struggling for the raise hand button. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we, we got the idea. <laughs> yep. I'm a, a resident, 37A Woodmont. Um, my wife is also on the call, and uh, some of our neighbors uh, in the adjacent neighbors are aware. The only thing I would add to this is um, it well said that there's no sidewalk. Uh, and the crosswalk or the bike path draws a lot of pedestrian traffic. And what's not captured uh, maybe in uh, in just the numbers is that it's a blind corner. Um, it, it seems to be, you know, 16 miles an hour doesn't sound, you know, an average bad. But coming around a blind corner that there's very little reaction time. And I find myself just stepping outside the door, having to listen, and then, you know, having a three-year-old and, and everybody else around us with new kids. It, it just, I feel like it could be safer. Um, and reaching out, you know, th there was several incidences where I just thought, you know, that this was unsafe. Um, so the, the ask is, or, you know, the, the plea or for help, is that it's not just neighbors that are driving through this street because we are frequently walking into town from this location. We know the neighbor's cars in the adjacent area. It's, it seems to be traffic coming from like the industrial way, people bypassing King Street. I think sometimes Waze takes new cars through our neighborhood just because just it saves 30 seconds on travel time. So we see a lot of cars that aren't from our community, I would say, you know, immediate community um, that aren't aware that there's kids, you know, running around. So that that's what I would want to express. It's it's really not just my kid, but it's it's the people that are frequently coming and going from the the bike path. We we have a lot of pedestrian traffic in a, in a big blind corner. And and I, I don't want this city to come tear down the trees. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else who wishes to uh, speak to us about Woodmont? Okay, uh, Sharon, I see your hand up. Hold on just a minute and meet you. Okay, go ahead. Um, hold on, you're not unmuted, so let's try that again. Right. Did that work? Yeah, there we go. Okay, there great, great. Okay. Um, I just want to echo what Jesse's saying um, to emphasize how dramatic the blind corner is. Um, it's, it's, you know, a car can be coming along pretty slowly. Um, and if your kiddo is standing there, and again, we don't have a choice but to walk in the street because there is no sidewalk here um, on this block. So even if we're staying on the sides, because it's that blind corner, I can't tell you how many times I've been walking my dog or walking my toddler and a car comes super, super close to, um, you know, grazing us or coming into an accident. Um, we have a really amazing community on this block of a bunch of kids and um, families, a lot of dogs. We all love hanging out with each other. Our kids love to ride their bikes together. My toddler learned to ride her bike with, you know, our eight-year-old neighbors. And um, it's just a shame that we have to be so incredibly vigilant with adults constantly standing in the street um, to make sure that folks aren't sort of whipping around. Um, and the last thing I'd say is that we've put up a couple of signs ourselves as a community on this block, asking people to be um, cautious, saying that there are kids playing and they haven't really done, I, I don't think folks notice them when they're driving, which I understand. Um, so yeah, I just wanna emphasize what Jesse's saying and um, point out that it is quite a dramatic blind corner. 
Okay, thank you for your comments. Can you just confirm uh, your city or town of residence, please, Northampton? Yes, oh, sorry. Yes, I am um, a resident of Northampton on this block on Woodmont Road. Okay, thank you for your comments. Thanks. Anyone else have any comments on Woodmont for us? Okay, any comments or questions from the commission about Woodmont? Okay, so as I mentioned, there's um, no existing speed regulation on this road. Um, as uh, folks on this commission may know, and as uh, uh, folks in the city may know, um, we did uh, opt into uh, legislation that um, uh, creates a scenario where there is no uh, speed regulation. The default speed limit is 25 miles an hour, but the area has to be thickly settled in order for that speed limit um, to be in effect. Um, in this case, this area um, is not thickly settled. Um, so the default speed limit is not that lower number. It's actually 30 miles an hour. Um, but that's more of a technical legal um, scenario rather than the practical uh, application of what people on the street are experiencing. So there is obviously more to this than uh, just numbers. And we certainly hear your comments about um, the blind corner and the rail trail crossing and children in the neighborhood. So uh, I fully acknowledge um, everything that that you both said uh, in that vein. Any other comments from anyone on the commission? So the way this process works is we will take the data that we have collected, we uh, do an engineering analysis of the area and then determine what, if any, next steps are appropriate. And we will communicate that out to you uh, at a future TPC meeting. So thank you to, to both of you who came and commented on this. Um, going once more if anyone on the commission has any comments on this. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to a discussion of the traffic calming request for Fort Street. Uh, so this came to us March 4th, 2023. Uh, the resident concern is uh, speeding vehicles, high rates of speed for passing through vehicles. Um, and there is more traffic uh, seasonally when the old Springfield Road Bridge uh, is opened after being closed for the winter. Uh, the resident is requesting uh, traffic calming measures. So just uh, some engineering notes on this. Fort Street is approximately 1,430 feet long and 22 feet wide between South Street and Old Springfield Road. There are sidewalks on the northeast side. Parking is, al is, is allowed along both sides of the street and there is no existing speed regulation. Um, in this case, the area is considered to be thickly settled, so the default speed limit would be 25 miles an hour. Chief, you have some comments for us. Yes, a covert speed data collection device was placed in the area of 24th Street from July 20th through August 6, 2023. During that time, the speeds of 1,720 vehicles were measured. The average speed was 16 miles per hour and the 85th percentile speed was 20.4 miles per hour. Okay, thank you, Chief. Is there anyone here from oh. Fort Street uh, who has a comment? John, I see your actual hand up. Um, hold on a second, let me see if I can unmute you. Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, go ahead, John. Thank you. Hi, my name is John. Um, I live at 24th Street. Um, and so I've seen, um, I see the seasonal traffic on the street. It does tend to sort of die off in the winter. Um, in the spring and the summer, though, it's pretty intense because it connects all the way through to East Hampton. Then there's also people that use boats that bring their boats back and forth, like at the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer. All that is fine. Um, my concern is some of the vehicles that drive really fast down our street. And um, I, some of them are like big pickups and stuff and probably people that are, I don't, I don't know what they're trying to do, but they're driving really fast. And um, I've had interactions with a couple of people telling them to slow down, have uh, you know been sort of yelled at. And it just kind of makes you feel not super safe. Um, in your house and where you live. So um, that's really my main concern. It's not the regular traffic, it's the traffic that seems to be kind of aggressive. Um, 
Okay, thank you for your comment. Um, mm -hmm. Mike Sullivan, I see your hand up. Um, hold on just a moment. Go ahead and unmute. Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, so Mike Sullivan from 25 Fort Street. Um, yeah, so um, just a few comments. Uh, I, I, I I do uh, agree with the, the first speaker. I think it's it's not even necessarily the top 85th percentile, but it might be the top 95th percentile or something. It's these uh, cars uh, uh, for people who are usually going down to the uh, um, meadows for recreation. So I, I go down there too a lot. Um, and I often, I see people drinking. Um, you know, I don't know if they came from the East Hampton entrance or from the Fort Street entrance, but uh, I'm sure there are at least some because they, they do tend to drive pretty aggressively. Um, I know that on occasion there's an influx of traffic. So like, for example, when uh, David Narkowitz was a Ward 4 rep, so even before he was uh, mayor or um, counselor at large, um, he had a group of Fort Street and Olive Street people meet um, the uh, crew house because they had started a, a new uh, set of lessons. And there it was people not necessarily, you know, driving under the influence, but certainly driving fast and also quite frequently um, with high frequencies in the morning. So there's going to be there's going to be higher uses and lower uses for this road. Um, that um, and then um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that there's going to be um, the bridge uh, is supposed to be replaced. Um, so I think uh, this is the bridge on Old Springfield Road. So I think that um, that will also lead to an increase of traffic because it'll be more of a go through to get all the way to East Hampton. Oh, yeah, sorry. One more thing. Uh, this, even though um, this street does have a fair number of uh, vehicles oh, using yeah. to the, get down there, and it's also part of a, um, a loop if you include Manhattan. So there are a lot of dog walkers, um, as well as kids on push scooters who are trying to make a loop out of some sort of, you know, otherwise non-grid-like set of streets. So it is a multi-use street. It's a multi it's essentially a multi-use path. People don't use the sidewalk, even when you have these high-speed, possibly under influence, um, vehicles. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Anyone else? I see Scotia. I uh, see so your actual hand. I'm going to unmute you. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm the one who actually put in this request um, last March. So I just want to put in some subjective observations as well as the objective facts that were done with the traffic study um, last year. So it's a really, as you stated, it's a thickly settled neighborhood. It's an old neighborhood. Houses are close together. There are a lot of walkers. There are groups of people, lots of um, older people who walk the street because it's a nice neighborhood. And it's a really nice neighborhood to walk. Um, and that in mind, there are lots of dog walkers who use this neighborhood. They use the Manham Loop. They use the, you know, they go down to Fourth Street. Uh, there are lots of trucks and boats. That's going to be common during the course of the summer months. Um, but there are speeding pickup trucks, which are really pretty dangerous. They really take off. And there is drinking in the meadows. I know I used to do that as a youth when I was down there fishing at the confluence of Mill River and the Connecticut River. People drink and fish down there all the time. They have for a long time. So you get a lot of people coming up through that road at night, sometimes speeding, and you can hear them coming. Um, I've actually put boulders in my yard uh, because of fear of somebody coming off that road at such a velocity that they would fly into my house. Uh, my house is not a very large house. It would take out half my house if one of those pickup trucks lost control. And it's a tiny old street. Um, probably started out as a path. It's one of two of the original roads off of South Street. One is Olive and the other is Fort that went down to East Hampton and eventually Springfield. Those turned into horse paths, buggy paths, whatever. Now there are car roads, but they're really very small and very narrow. And people drive them like they're an on-ramp to I-91. It's really disconcerting. Um, and having grown up in that neighborhood as a kid, having ridden bicycles, we were always warned about Fort Street. Um, you had to be careful because people speed on that street so quickly. So I will leave my subjective observations at that. 
Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Councillor Perry, welcome. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for taking time and thank you, Scotia, for, for bringing this forward. Um, so I, I just also want to give some subject, subjective observations. I live on the corner of South and Fort Street. My kids are there. Um, I also often walk in that neighborhood. In the area where there is a sidewalk, um, I'm less concerned because at least I can stay on the sidewalk. But going down um, Fort Street towards the meadows um, and uh, kind of going up Olive, those are two of the scariest places for me. Um, I'm always, I always have my headphones in, so I, I make sure that I turn my music off when I'm during that path, just so I can hear uh, any cars coming. Uh, it's 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 pretty blind for you know the Olive entrance going down, and I think the same as the Fort. Um, and as people have stated, a lot of folks use that area to walk. It's a good pathway over to the meadows. Um, you know, people use a loop that goes from Olive all the way over there as well. So um, I am in support of any way that we can kind of slow traffic down that way. Um, and I will also attest that that it does increase during these summer spring months. Um, you know, when the when the weather is nice and people are looking to go frolic in the meadows, that is when it becomes more dangerous, um, which is tough because that's when also more people are walking. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else from the public wish to talk to us about Fort Street? Okay, Councilor Dubs, welcome to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, just I'm just here to echo uh, what everyone else is saying and to show my support. Um, I'm I'm, I'm a Ward Four City Councilor, and so I'm here to show my support for the residents that are concerned about the speeding on Fort Street and. Um, this issue is, is fairly new to me, so I'm here to basically just observe and and help out in any way that I can and show my support. So, and I'd like to thank Scotia for inviting me to the meeting. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Councillor. Okay. Anyone else have any comments for us? Yeah, okay. I do, Donna. Yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. Um, hi, folks, and hi, neighbors. Uh, for those who don't know, um, I actually live on Manhattan Street on the corner of Fort and Manham, 50 Manham Street. And so I too am in the middle of the mayhem sometimes uh, going up and down Fort Street. Um, I would echo what my neighbors have said. Uh, for the most part, it is a particularly narrow street. There are a lot of walkers. In fact, I bet you there's more walkers than cars, um, which is why when those pickup trucks, and it is usually a handful of pickup trucks, frankly, um, that are going at ridiculous speeds for that street it's um it's a little bit frightening and my kids have grown up um in this area and it was always like a stay on manhand street don't go on fort street right unless we're with you and we'll walk you around the corner i mean it is it is like that um uh, there are also no sidewalks for at least half of fort street so from where east street uh hits fort street all the way down the hill there's no sidewalk there so naturally all of the walkers that go down into the meadows from the entire neighborhood on that side of South Street, they all come through Fort Street and then walk right down, excuse me, from East Street and then walk right down the middle of Fort Street uh, down the hill. So there is a lot of interaction there uh, with folks um, directly in the street. Not sure what the solutions are, but it is there is some tension there and certainly everyone in the neighborhood, um, I think would echo the comments we've heard here. Thank you, Jamie. All right, Cheryl, I think I see your actual hand up. Um, so I'm going to ask you to unmute. You should see a box on the screen that allows you to unmute. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm at 58 Fort Street, so I'm down toward the bottom of the hill um, where there is no sidewalks. And there's the turn from Old South or Manhan onto Fort Street. Um, I'm a dog walker, and it's uh, especially during the summer months, though it's a problem in the winter as well, uh, the traffic can be unpredictable and uh and backing out of my driveway or walking out of my door i certainly have to and walking up or down the street i certainly have to exercise a lot of caution um 
also that turn from uh, from either Manhan or Old South Street onto Fort goes into my lower yard. And uh, for instance, this winter, a plow truck ended up plowing in and out of that yard because it was it, it is a hard corner to uh, negotiate either in inclement weather or at a high rate of speed. So yeah, that's all for me. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Okay, Debbie, go ahead. Hi. Um, first, I apologize for my tech problems. I've actually heard the meeting. I just haven't been involved in the whole meeting. Um, the points I wanted to make have been said. I live a couple of blocks from Fort Street and walk there regularly. The problems aren't going to show up in the traffic numbers because they are uh, the exceptional vehicles. And I think it's being on the gravel road down in the meadows and then hitting hitting the asphalt coming up. And one point um, I agree with Councillor Perry exactly that it's there's no sidewalks on the hill uh, and the sight lines are pretty are pretty short because it curves on both Olive and Fort. But the one point I wanted to make is that by slowing traffic down on Fort, I predict that it'll be like water and start traveling on Olive instead. Yeah, thank you, Devin. And we've certainly heard about this on Olive Street as well. Yeah. Any other comments for us on Fort Street? Um, so again, we it, take all of these comments, we take the data that we have collected, um, but most importantly, um, the observations of those in the neighborhoods, um, and we will do what we can um, to see if we can improve conditions. Any other comments for us um, before we move on to the next agenda item? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to discussion of the traffic calming request for Barrett Street. Um, so uh, a couple of different requests from Barrett Street. Um, and uh, again, speeding vehicles, um, multiple uh, apartment complexes in the area uh, and proximity to uh, the school, um, as well as kind of a difficult intersection um, with Barrett and Jackson Street are the primary um, drivers of this traffic calming application. Um, so I just have uh, some engineering comments on Barrett Street. Barrett Street provides one lane of travel in the east and west directions between Jackson Street and King Street. It's approximately 2,360 feet long and 24 feet wide. There are sidewalks on the south side for its entire length, double yellow center lines, crosswalks are marked at Jackson and at King Street. Um, there are a number of parking prohibitions in various locations, and there is an existing speed regulation um, from 1985 um, that sets the speed limit at 25 miles an hour, and the uh, pavement condition is fair. Uh, Chief, would you mind letting us know the results of your analysis, please? Yes, uh, speed data was collected in the area of 69 Barrett Street from September 6th through September 8th, 2023. During the data collection period, 8,815 vehicles were analyzed. The posted uh, speed limit is 25. The average speed was 29 miles per hour, and the 85th percentile speed was 34.1 mile per hour. This area was identified as, a, as an area where vehicles are routinely speeding. Okay, thanks, Chief. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I see a couple of hands up. So Rhea and Peter Mack is our first. And so I will unmute, go ahead. Yes, um, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, um, so yeah, I submitted one of those um, requests. I live at 137 Barrett Street. And my big concerns, um, of course, is the speeding traffic, um, but I'm also concerned about the people crossing um, down at Hathaway Farms and Coach Light. Um, there's a bus stop right there, um, and I walk down there all the time, and there's kids and adults and everybody who will cross, but there's no crosswalk for them. So it's just like a leap of faith um, to get to the other side. Um, so I would, I would hope that maybe potentially that can be explored, that there's a safe way um, for that to happen um, and some way to calm the speeding. Uh, I realize that the fire department uses Barrett um, all the time, 
so I don't know if that if that has some significance to being able to do that. Um, and I've also just noticed there's been a, a big increase in traffic recently um, with the construction on King, but also the Aldi's and Starbucks um, down the street. Okay, good. Thank you for your comments. Um, I also want to relay that uh, Councillor Moulton was in touch with me to send his regrets that he was unable to uh, attend this meeting, um, but I believe that he was in communication um, with the uh, with Juan Carlos, um, whose hand is up, um, and uh, who I'm going to unmute. So go ahead. Um, I, I agree with the person who spoke earlier uh, about um, the speeding and the children crossing and adults as well. If there's a school bus stop, but there's also a lot of, PB, there's the PBTA buses have a stop as well. So there are, there are a lot of pedestrians that cross from one side to the other. And there's Jackson Street School at the top of the hill. There's always kids walking um, back and forth for, to and from school. Um, and a, a lot of apartment complexes. Um, so there, there are a lot of kids that walk on the street and we do see people speeding often. We often see that. Great, thank you. Would you mind just confirming your uh, city of residence is Northampton? Yes, we live in Northampton. Okay. Yeah, we live in 91 Barrett Street, Northampton. Okay. Very good, thank you for your comments. And uh, I just, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, yes. That's okay, Quick please comment. go ahead. Please yeah, go ahead. I just want to also uh, remind people that we have the marsh on Barrett Street, and there is wildlife, wildlife um, you know, animals crossing the streets too. So I'm afraid they're gonna get hit sometimes. You know, we have deers, we have foxes, we have a lot of um, wildlife um, here in Barrett Street. Uh, and with the opening of Aldi's, especially Aldi's, with the opening of Starbucks, it was bad, but with Alice, it just it's just getting worse and worse. So I hope that you really consider um, having a solution for this problem where we have an accident. Great, thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Anyone else who wishes to speak to us about Barrett Street? Um, any comments from any members of the commission? I will say the accident numbers caught my eye. Go ahead, Councillor Jarrett. Oh, did we get those accident numbers? The collision data. Yeah, Chief, would you mind uh, just repeating that uh, collision data for us? A review of the five-year collision data revealed a total of 25 collisions in the area of Barrett Street. Six of those collisions occurred at the intersection of Barrett and Jackson Streets. Nine occurred at the intersection of Barrett and King Streets. Uh, there were a number of contributing factors um, wildlife, ice, distracted driving to all the collisions and not one specific trend. However, many of the collisions that occurred were not at the intersections. Um, if vehicles have been traveling more slowly, it's possible that the collisions could have been avoided. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted, I travel through this area as well and just wanted to put in a special, an extra plug for supporting those who are using the Either, either public transit or the school bus or the safe way to cross uh, between uh, the two apartment complexes there where the bus stops are on either side. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Any other comments for us on Barrett Street? Okay, and again, something we will take a close look at um, based uh, uh, again on the speeding um, and the collision data. Um, so thank you to uh, those who participated in that discussion. Okay, moving on, uh, we have a discussion of a parking request for Barrett Place. So probably the easiest thing to do in this scenario is Maggie, if you could put the map up. Um, so we can see the existing no parking so, uh, zones on Barrett Place. So we received a request to take a closer look at this street. Um, we have a, kind of a variety of regulations um, that are 
uh, trying to prevent uh, overnight and permanent or sort of, you know, park your car and walk away for several days. I think that's the intent behind the existing regulation. So I think um, the map tells kind of an interesting story. Um, and there is a requirement that people sort of move their cars around because, again, we're trying uh, or the um, folks who originally passed these ordinances um, were, I, I think, trying to um, uh, prohibit kind of permanent parking. Um, Nancy, I don't know if you have any comments for us on um, existing conditions on Barrett Place and kind of what your experience is out here and like who's parking here. Um, just any comments for us on this? Well, I agree with what you were saying. The original intent, from my understanding, was to keep cars from being warehoused on the street, um, which tends to happen near um, congested areas, near areas um, up by the college. Um, and actually, the parking restrictions um, along this road have been doing what they were originally intended to do um, and keep vehicles from being left here for um, a multiple amount of days, uh, a, a week at a time. Um, so basically the, the ordinance is doing what it was crafted to do. Thanks, Nancy. And it, the request that came to us, because we always say to folks, okay, well, what would you like to see different? Or, you know, what is your suggestion for improvement if maybe habits have changed? Um, and one of the potential scenarios that was floated to us was uh, permit parking. Um, so I don't know, Nancy, if you just had a couple of words to say to us about um, where there's currently permit parking and what the fee is that's associated with that and how your office administers that. There is only uh, one street that's Kensington Avenue um, currently restricted to um, permit parking only, resident parking only. Um, and that's because of its um, close proximity to Smith College it, and also because it's um, one of the highest student population sections of the college um, runs parallel to um, Kensington Avenue. It's a $25 a year permit for the residents. Um, and like I said, that, that is the only place where there's uh, resident parking only currently in place. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. All right, Elizabeth, I see your hand up and I will ask you to unmute. Go ahead. Oh, hi. I, um, I live at 12 Barrett Place and just showing my support that I would be very happy to have, um, you know, residents be able to park there. It would be really convenient for, for all of us. And having lived here for like 18 years, I don't think it would cause, you know, congestion or anything. So just voicing my support for that. Okay. Thank you for that comment. Yep. Next is Allison. Hey, can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'm the one who put in this request only because, and I, this feels like a very first world problem, so I <laughs> apologize on that, but uh, it's just, we moved here um, to, I live on Barrett, the four Barrett Place, Northampton, and we moved here um, when we had younger kids, and now we have teenagers, and that just means more cars, unfortunately, and we have a, a, a one car garage, so there's just nowhere to go. And so we end up having to park illegally and it would just be lovely to not park illegally. Um, and that's really the basic crux of it. But I, I totally understand it would be irritating to have a lot of students' cars, you know, piled up here, especially when it snows. But um, it would also be nice to not have to pay t tickets to park on my own street. Thank you for your comment. Any members of the commission have any comments? Councilor Clemmer, go ahead. Hi, that's um, in my ward and I drove by today and um, I agree with Allison that there is no place for people to park overnight if they have guests. Um, it's a dead end street, so it, it would be a good place to stash your car for a few days if you wanted to, but um, I also have a one car garage where I am and it, it is challenging to 
park and especially if we have people over. So um, I think something like a permit or opening up a section of the street to 24 hours parking would, would be helpful for the residents there. Okay, thank you, Councillor. This is one of the challenges we have in this area. It's you know quite congested and definitely can get parked up at certain times of the year. Um, Councillor Jared, I saw your hand up, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, the council has considered has considered requests uh, over the last four years, at least while I've been on the council, for expanding resident parking behind beyond Kensington, um, and has been a little little reluctant to consider it. Sometimes residents, once they realize there is a cost that they will have to pay, uh, decide that they don't like that idea. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, it's certainly something. Since there, we do uh, offer that specifically in the area of Smith College, uh, with the understanding that there are there are particular uh, issues because of because of the college, uh, and this this is also uh, proximal to the college, so um, <clears throat> that I could understand that. Um, I was curious uh, about you know Prospect Street, which intersects uh, what the parking restrictions are there. Are people able to? To park overnight there or not, and um, then also the the idea of uh, do we do any alternate night parking? You know where you can park one night. Uh, I mean, in the city in general, uh, where you know on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays you can park on this side of the street. On the other days, you can park on the other overnight. Um, <clears throat> that would allow people to park overnight, but wouldn't allow people to warehouse or you know have cars there multiple nights without having to move them. Um, so I was just curious if that's something that we've ever looked at. Yeah, I think this entire area by Smith um, is becoming increasingly um, parked up and it, kind of an increasing topic of conversation at these meetings. So to answer your questions, I think there's a variety of parking regulations in the area. Part of what our assessment would be after this meeting and hearing from residents is to look at surrounding streets because often if we create a scenario where it's like okay permit parking only here or you know we're going to restrict parking in this particular location it's going to push the parking to an adjacent street and then push it to an adjacent street and we just keep pushing um, and sometimes we can create unintended consequences so what we would have to do after this meeting is kind of go back and look at all intersecting streets to try to determine how we could potentially be pushing cars elsewhere that would then disrupt other streets um because this does have the potential to set off a, a chain reaction um it, i think is we're aware from prior conversations um to to further answer your question there are some restrictions around street sweeping in certain locations in certain parts of the city um but i think maybe Nancy may be able to speak more intelligently to if we have kind of off night um, restrictions for other reasons. On Dryads Green, which is another street near Smith College, um, there's alternate side parking where the vehicle has to be moved um, to the other side by 11 a.m. Um, and that really is the only street in that area where there's like alternate side parking, once again, causing people to have to move their cars and not warehouse the cars. Thanks, Nancy. And of course, Dryads Green is the next uh, parking request that we're going to be discussing. Um, so my comment on this, um, which I will hold until after Carolyn speaks. Go ahead, Carolyn. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, um, I apologize. You know, this updated Zoom, I cannot figure out where the raise hand thing is. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I do, I just want to put out there that I think that we should really be um, thoughtful, deliberative about um, um and and reserved about instituting um residents only parking on streets for some of the reasons that were mentioned i think that you know it, these are public streets if you have friends who are coming over or spending the night and then you don't have a pass for them and i know that's you know and i think there would so i think that makes it complicated um 
as um, to have on a public street that may not necessarily need it. And so that maybe incremental steps um, might be appropriate just to test out. Um, so like Councillor Jarrett said, um, one side, alternating sides, um, overnight parking or something like that, or maybe even just testing the um, removal of the restriction and see what happens. I mean, I don't know how long ago this that parking, and, and maybe you said it, Nancy, how long ago this restriction was put in place to prohibit overnight parking but have things shifted since then. So I just, I, I guess I would just um, err on the side of caution before going into that residence only um, parking. Thanks, Carolyn. And my comment sort of along the same lines is that I think we have spoken enough about streets in this area in Ward 2, um, you know, kind of over the last several months that, we have something of a systemic issue. Um, and, you know, there's a couple of different approaches and I think it's good that both Barrett and Dryads are, are on here today, um, but we can also see that we kind of have ongoing and continuing conversation around how to best manage this. Um, so, you know, our options are sort of we surgically go in street by street or we think of a more big picture solution for the area and what does that radius become um and and you know the radius can definitely start to uh, mushroom on us if we're not careful um but i think that's the conversation that needs to be had um and, and i think it's a multi-street uh, conversation. Um, so that's just my observation on this. Anyone else? Councilor Clemmer, I see your hand is up, yeah. but that may be old. Or it... I, I re-raised it. Oh, you did. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, a couple of things on what uh, Councilor Jarrett said. I did get um, a letter from a constituent on Kensington too. Um, who wasn't very happy with the $25 a year um, fee for parking. So um, I agree that people don't want to pay to park on their own block, um, even though it's a very, very minimal um, amount of money. And uh, the second thing is, do you, is there a reason why there's no parking on the south side of the street, or was it just to minimize the, um, the parking in that area? Um, I suspect it's likely due to the um, narrowness of the street. Mm -hmm. um, so what we end up with in a lot of these roads is you just, you can't, you don't have enough space for, you know, parking mm -hmm. on both sides and driveways and a travel lane. And, you know, you end up blocking emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And if I could point out, um, Donna, that one of the problems um, that we've encountered with Kensington being um, by resident permit only is that it has pushed the parking problem to Washington, um, the next street over concept um, with the residents being upset about vehicles parking there and um, being pushed from the college out to the next street over. So yeah, thanks, thanks Anthony. Yeah, Councilor Jarrett, go ahead. Uh, just a question. Is there an ordinance that prohibits the maximum amount of time a vehicle can be parked on a public street before it has to be moved? 72 hours. Okay. And parking enforcement does um, go out and um, electronically mark uh, the vehicles in place um, so that uh, that can be tracked and then enforcement action can be taken at that point. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other comments for us on this particular agenda item? So I think this actually ties nicely into the conversation about our last agenda item, which is a discussion of a parking request on Dryad's Green. Um, so Maggie, if you wouldn't mind getting the map up on this, 
Um, so Dryad's Green is um, kind of an interesting street. It's got multiple segments, but um, the segment in question um, has got a lot going on in a pretty uh, short area. So um, as we've just been discussing, the intent is to keep vehicles turning over. Um, but I, again, the request on this one is um, is from a resident um, who's sort of struggling with the um, it, with these regulations. Um, so, is anyone here from the public who wishes to talk to us about Dryads Green? Let's start there. Okay, Phoebe, I see your hand up. I'll meet you. Yes, hello. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep, go ahead. Great. Yes, yes. I'm I'm the um, the person who submitted the request. Uh, I know my my near neighbors support me in this. Um, we've lived in the neighborhood. I live in Northampton. Um, we've lived in the neighborhood for uh, twelve years now. Um, previously, the the this. This residence, as well as the three adjacent ones, um, so 55, 57, 59, and, and I'm 63, were owned by Smith College. In the last 10 years, all of those have um, been sold to um, uh, individual residents. Um, there, when they were owned by Smith College, there was parking for the four residents um, behind the, at the old infirmary. So that's some of the history that there was actually some parking available for these four fairly large houses. Um, uh, since then, they've all developed their own driveways. Um, in, in any event, that's some of the history. The, the Obviously the intent is to, as, as you stated previously with, with Barrett Place, is to prevent warehousing um, of cars. Um, by the um by the smith students um but the whatever the intent was about making it the 11 a.m uh switch over um from side to side is it, it it's it it's just it's extremely regressive um because if if you're not actually in your residence at 11 a.m and you happen to have a visitor or somebody doing for whatever reason, um, can't fit in your driveway. Um, you're you're subject to a twenty five dollar uh, uh, violation fee um, if if parking enforcement comes around. So, um, for anybody who works a job that doesn't work from home um, and for some reason needs to park on the street or has a visitor parking on the street in front of their house or uh, it, close to their house, um, they're taking this risk of a of, of violation. Um, so at minimum, um, it, it should be changed to some more reasonable time frame when when this when the switchover has to happen. Um, the reason why I suggested permit parking is because Kensington Avenue is directly adjacent to it. Um, that's the so obviously the NPD patrols for that from midnight to 6 a.m. for violations of, of resident permit parking only during those hours. Um, so it wouldn't actually be an extra, I mean, it's it's it would be in very close proximity. Um, as, as for like spilling over the parking, making the parking problem just move further out, um, Dryad, the rest of Dryad's Green, those residents, first of all, they all have longer driveways and more space um, to, to park off off uh, um, off street, um, um, Harrison Avenue is also um, has the same 11 a.m. opposite side of the street. Um, again, they they seem to be able to manage that fine. So um, we're just talking about this one section of Dryad's Green. Um, Great. Would yep. you mind? You're Northampton resident. I just need to confirm for the yes, record. I am a Northampton resident. Yes, okay. correct. Great, thank you. And, and, I, and I, sorry, just one more thing. I, I totally understand the idea of, of trying to look at the, the problem in a neighborhood uh, framework um, and, and not do sort of piecemeal um, Band-Aid fixes, but um, I just would hate to have this 
issue get subsumed into a larger scheme that doesn't ever or has a much longer time frame. Yeah, appreciate Thank that you. comment. Thank you. Um, my comment on this is that um, when we did take a look at the area, we find that, um, as I mentioned, this is a pretty short stretch and there's a lot going on here and there is some conflicting signage um, that actually physically exists in the field um, that that does need to be addressed. Um, so um, minimally, we, we need to deal with that. Um, does anyone on the commission have any other comments about this? Um, in particular or generally? Councillor Clemmer, go ahead. Yeah, this is also in my ward. And um, yeah, it just seems um, I've had a lot of experience with alternate side living in New York um, most of my life. And um, it just seems like it'd be very challenging to move your car um, with those long hours. And um, I mean, even if it was till seven at night um, from 11 a.m., people could do it after dinner or something and, and switch it over. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to look at to see if there's other solutions for this. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments from any members of the commission? Nancy, go ahead. The, um, the feedback that I commonly receive is that the signs are confusing um, and that the, the idea of moving a vehicle at 11 a.m. Um, when like what was said, if you're not home, working from home, you're not going to be there. Um, I think that it's a confusing situation. Um, and I agree that we need to look closely at the signage and what the existing ordinances are. Yeah, and this is, you know, these were turn of the century ordinances. So, you know, a couple of decades have gone by, and I think it's time for a fresh set of eyes on this uh, for sure. Any other comments on this? So I think we we hear the comments about this not getting pulled into a, a larger conversation. I think there's um, particular problems here with some signage that needs to be looked at. Um, and and there is a larger picture conversation, but I, I totally hear what you're saying about this smaller section of roadway. Minimally, we need to make the signs make sense. So I, I think that's, um, that's a good starting point, um, but certainly part of a larger conversation. Um, any other comments on Dryad's Green? Suggestions from commissioners? Councilor Clemmer, go ahead. Yeah, just one last thing. Since uh, I, these two last streets were are in my ward, if I could do anything to help out or anything around this, just let me know. Thank you, appreciate that offer. Okay, hearing no further discussion on Dryads, I'll ask if there's any new business. Okay, and hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move to adjourn. Second. So that was Carolyn with a second by Jamie. Any discussion? Okay, Beth, please call the roll for us. Donna? Yes. John? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Alex? Yes. Deborah? Yes. Adam still not here? Uh, Devin? Yes. Diana? Yes. And Jamie? Yes. It's unanimous yes. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next month. Take care.